Mr Steve Baker. Thank you. Of course vaccine passports would be discriminatory. They would have the effect of socially and economically excluding people who had, had, not, had not had either a vaccine or a recent test result. It is, of course, unlawful under equality law to discriminate against people with protected characteristics, including age, disability, pregnancy, religion or belief. And I underscore belief. I shall have my vaccine when I'm offered it, but there'll be various people for various reasons who will not choose to do so. Making, effectively making vaccines mandatory by implication, by implication through COVID status certification, could leave us in a position where it would be counterproductive. The ev evidence from across Europe shows that if people feel compelled to take vaccines, it puts them off. It would implement, of course, a checkpoint society. Passes for the pub. That would be what it would mean, Sir David. If you want to have your pint, you've got to show your papers. I did not think that was the society we wished to live in. A surveillance state would be instituted. There'd be mission creep. They'd be irreversible, they'd be divisive, and of course they'd infringe on the autonomy of the individual. We need to consider if such a scheme would enable some and restrict others unfairly for their own reasons who have not taken the vaccine. We cannot penalise people who have exercised their right not to take the vaccine. This may be an expectant mother, for example, who just cannot get a piece about taking the vaccine, even with the reassurances given by scientists and health advisors. To penalise this person from public places or services would be wrong. In closing, I must make clear I would be utterly opposed and believe this government needs to avoid a domestic internal vaccine passport requirement for travel throughout the United Kingdom. We must hold dear to the liberties we once knew and want to return to. Can I say from the outset, uh, Sir David, I do welcome this debate. And I welcome it because I think it's an opportunity and I hope it's an opportunity for the government to vigorously reinforce the view that they are not going to implement passports. And I hope that they use the, the uh, uh, platform today that they will not be doing this because they are a complete and total overreaction and completely and totally unnecessary. Uh, for example, we had a similar response for flu vaccine. No one would uh, be saying we must therefore have a passport for flu vaccine to prove that you've had that particular vaccine. And that flu, of course, takes many, many lives each winter in the United Kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it would be a complete and total overreaction for members here to stand up and demand such a passport for people who have received or not received the uh, flu vaccine. So we don't need it. And it would become a supplementary identity card. The vaccine passport would, in fact, uh, lead to a two-tier society and would increase opportunities for discrimination. And I think that that would be abundantly wrong because our civil liberties are something that we should cherish and something that we should not throw away so quickly to others to manage for us because they know better. I think the people know what is best and we should guard our civil liberties cautiously. And the third issue, and one which I am totally opposed to, is the need for COVID vaccine certification for everyday use by citizens to access venues and services. Is that really the sort of country we wish to live in? One in which we have two tiers of rights and discriminate access to goods and services on the basis of health status. There are those who cannot be vaccinated, perhaps for health reasons, or indeed, as a newly pregnant constituent emailed me, she and other pregnant women won't be able to get vaccinated whilst they're pregnant. And if she's able to breastfeed, she won't be able to get vaccinated for the duration of the time that she is breastfeeding either. The groups who are least likely to take up the vaccine are among the most marginalised, and they will become yet more marginalised by vaccine passports. These passports are essentially a way of making vaccines mandatory. Coercion is never a good way to build trust and persuade people to do something. A government that has once encroached on our liberties under the cover of a pandemic is not minded to hand them back easily. Will vaccine technologies be switched off once they are no longer needed? To quote a member of the Ada Lovelace expert group, once a road is built, good luck not using it. But domestic uh, COVID certificates, whether used by public services or private businesses would be intrusive, pointless 
and wrong. Uh, and I fear they would be tantamount to moving vaccination to a more mandatory footing. Uh, and my honourable friend, the Minister for Vaccine Deployment, was right, in my opinion, when he stated that vaccine certificates would in fact be discriminatory. We cannot allow a position where significant numbers of Britons are turned away from jobs and services on the basis of their vaccination status. And I close uh, with the view that I fear that should vaccine certificates become commonplace, they would inevitably expand and endure beyond the immediate challenges of this pandemic, which I do not believe should be allowed to happen. Yeah. The efforts of the government, I would suggest, should be about returning our liberties rather than tightening them further. And that is why I oppose this idea of vaccine passport. And of course, once we accept that it's OK to have a passport for COVID, where else is that argument then going to go when the threat of COVID has receded? If it was OK for COVID, why not require people to produce one for HIV, for example? What we have here today is the very thin end of a thick and dangerous wedge. The concept of a vaccine passport is not just some matter of administrative convenience. It is a first step step in a major redefinition of the relationship between the citizen and the state and I would suggest that it is one we should not take so lightly. When freedoms are given up then the state rarely rushes to return them. But we're asking people to inject something into their bodies, a medical procedure, and that requires consent. That should be a very basic idea that we subscribe to and no government should be in the business of mandating or coercing people uh, to do that. As much as we may feel getting vaccinated is the right thing to do, people have rights and responsibilities over their own bodies. And I absolutely draw the line firmly uh, at coercing people to get vaccinated. That seems clearly to be discriminatory and would certainly lead to a legal challenge. We have to win the argument, recognising that some people won't want or won't be able to for whatever reason. And that's their free choice. So this idea of a vaccine passport, as some describe it, as a requirement to prove vaccination status before being able to go to the pub or events, or as some have suggested, to get a job, I think is truly abhorrent. I think it would be coercion on a level that I've never seen uh, in, in any democratic country and not something I could ever support. I assume, therefore, that there are no plans to do this. I hope that the minister will reaffirm this. I've been told by other ministers in the past that there are no plans. No matter how much I may personally believe it's important and the right thing to take it, it would fundamentally impact on people's basic rights to uh, require that vaccination status to be shown in our daily lives for our very basic rights and be a huge backward step for our liberty and freedoms.